asking for more police at Weewall because they're incapable of <laughs> The, the lands trust sold this out here now to the council for five hundred lousy dollars, right? And then I went down there with the petition of the whole town. I took it down to the lands trust meeting in Sydney. And they looked at it and they said, they, "Oh, well, you won't lose that. That'll be all right. Everything will be taken care of." Lyle Munro was involved too at the time. And then uh, when I came back here and the thing's in the same state as what it is. I wanted that camp tried out there at the Big Rear for an alternative camp instead of flying people to uh, Tamworth or Canada or somewhere out of the flood area. I wanted this all the time, but there was, then Keith Morrison uh, from the DA department and uh, Peter Gilligan, they came in and they said, oh, well, we'll buy the piggery out there. We've got the money, we can do this. So they went ahead and bought the piggery, and they're not thinking about the Aboriginal people. Now the no, Aboriginal people here, they are contented here. They were always. Well, it's most convenient, it's not lot convenient for, for the Aboriginal people here. Yeah, Even the, the old people, they can, they can get up to work. And, and no trouble for employment, they can pick them up along the, along the road there. You only got no trouble. You, you, what did you have, Beth? A hundred yards from here walk. to that road there to walk, walk there and you get picked up and go to work. Every morning. Out there you got three miles and to walk. It's all right for the people with the vehicles, but the people that haven't got any transport, what are they? They're shit, they're nothing. Poor bastard. They, 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 they come here for employment. That's why we want this put of the ground back. We want this, this, this is the old system. Well, it shouldn't have been so, it shouldn't have been so in the first place. Well, it's pretty small. They say that they own the land and they call it Crown Land. Now what you have to do is challenge that all the time. So you go and if you're arrested for trespassing, you keep taking it to court until they have to make a decision about it. They have to come to the come to terms with the fact that it's just a legal fiction and it doesn't belong to the Crown well, anyway. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, he's trying to dictate now to the Aboriginal people that's under him these supposed to be leaders in here. He's dictating to them the white man's policy, but they won't let any of us dictate the Aboriginal policy. You know what we want and how we live. They don't want, they want, they don't want us to step in and handle it. Well, it's if, if ever there was a thing that happened here, and if you ask Mr Gilligan to come down here, he'll pass the buck to another black fella up there that's working under him, uh, to send them down here, and then you've got to fight against black against black. But that, that, that white man won't come down himself. I think that's, that, you know, that's passing the buck, and I think that's, that's shit. Uh, good how campsite recognised. By the council, well, they take one thing off for us, it's like a government. They give you a spoonful of sugar in one hand and a pint of cyanide in the other. Because they don't want you to live where you should be living. And people want to be content in their own area, where they want to stay. But the government's going to say, well, you stay where I stay. <laughs> and you do as I tell you to do. <laughs> you know, this is the old system that's going on with the government now. And we want to try and uh, get this bit of ground here so we can be free people. We want to be free people and we don't want anyone to interfere with us. We want to be contented. And that's lost. <laughs> You can go on your old system all right through television or anywhere at all and they can put up a program that says this is your life and this is our life. Oh, that flag's right. That's good. I'm getting the flag. Just hang on, Yeah. I wish I'd be other lens on, you know. Joe, are you going to be in the picture? 
Over, 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 over the back there. Over the back. Look, there's a good spot there. Now look. Get over the back, yeah? No, look, just there. There's a great spot in there. Just done with it. Right now. Get that big fella in there. That's the bee. Yeah, right. That's the bee. Now you're funny, Julie, Joe. Do a big one. No, he'll be right. When he picks himself up, just keep going. We're up to date. It's all right. Got a look now. He's got his neck back pretty carefully. And Joe, without the cigarette in your mouth. Oh, I'll be fucking right. Yeah. You, 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 you got Bob, Bob Tribe? Bob Tribe. Hey, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. We'll get another one for good luck, eh? Here you are. Bye! Well, the hunter's being hunted. <laughs> Don't turn your face towards me and look, look, that's good. <laughs> I'm serious about this because I love my people that came so far to be involved. I got first prize with Joe in the wee. Oh, wee well, don't ever worry here. about that. But I, the, these people came so far to help me mm. to do something here to uh, make the council understand our problems. And we want to try and, you know, put this through and make it uh, the government understand it. How much, how much land do you want around we Well, for I, your particular. Well, the, the old people. system has all come through as uh, crown land. Now I don't care about the crown. That's English law, and I think about the old Aboriginal people used to run those land long and long before the Aboriginal, uh, the white people came here. <laughs> So I'd like to try and uh, claim as much uh, crown land as possible. Yeah, I think what people are afraid of, some people are afraid. What are they just afraid a minute, of? I think somebody might be afraid that, that you're going to, that sort of you want the land they got their house built on. Well, possibly, but why? They earned their money off it, they got enough money out of it now, why can't they build their house somewhere else? That it's crown land, that's what I want to claim, crown land. Yeah, but say, well, for argument's sake, I built my house. Yeah. I'm just about ready to retire. How long did you live on that house? On the which? How, how long did you live there at that particular house, if you built your house there? 25 years. 25 years. And you think in that 25 years you'd be uh, in the, you know, able to buy another house with the selling of that house? But who could I sell it to? Well, Probably we want to try and find out what the government's going to help us or not to try and get our land back. I can. I'd like you to read through it first if you can read everything. <laughs> What's that word there? Real? Local Aboriginal. Oh, local, sorry. Occupied land at Tulladunna Reserve. The stand that the Aboriginal people are taking by camping at Tulladunna Reserve is a stand for land rights in this area as well as for the whole of New South Wales. Tulladunna Reserve is symbolic of what has happened to Aborigines throughout this state. Blacks were forced to camp here in bad conditions as long as white people needed them to work. Then when it didn't suit the whites to house Aboriginals or to have Aboriginals camping this close to town, they were moved out of sight to the piggery. We are sick of being moved from pillar to post to suit the convenience of whites. The kind of services provided at the piggery could have been provided at Tulladunna. They weren't because whites didn't want Aborigines to live close to town where they had access to shops, jobs, schools and the hospital. The struggle for land rights in New South Wales is the same struggle as at Newcombar in the Northern Territory. Aboriginal people have the right to live where they want to live. Arthur, could you tell us what happened in Wewo recently with your son? Just well, a bit about it. the 20th, 21st of last month, I lost a boy in a tragedy which I don't think that he'd, he'd, ever, he'd, he'd ever commit himself. Because he, he was only a young, 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 young child, 21 years of age. Yeah. And he was living with us most of his life until he found out the way that he to support himself and to mix up with other people. In Sydney and he went to Sydney. 
about six months before his death. He played football for the All Blacks team down in Redfern. Mm -hmm. And he got a four weeks suspended and sent him home. He came home and came home and stayed with us for, for three weeks. Yeah. And on the date that he was supposed to go back, he, he was locked up by the police. Oh, what mm. happened? The well, the I, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but uh, the police had arrived at my place about three quarters or an hour before mm -hmm. I arrived down. The eldest son, son told, said to me, he said, the sergeant's looking for you. Yeah. I thought there was a warrant out, which I have got a warrant out for me. Yeah. I said, oh, well, I'll go up to the police station and find out. So uh, I jumped my son in law's car, my son in law, my, my daughter, my wife, oh, yeah. went up to the police station. The sergeant came out and he said, Arthur, he said, oh, I've got some bad news for you. And I said, what's that, son? He said, we locked your son Eddie up about an hour ago. Mm. And he said, we went back to inspect him. He said he was hanging from the cell door. I collapsed. Yeah. I collapsed and we didn't know nothing. Until about two days after. I still haven't got over it yet. Yeah. But I remember a few months before he had went to Sydney that the police has had threatened him and myself in the main street of Weewall, Rose yeah. Street. It said that, that they'd either get in or me. And that certain day that my son was taken to the Wee War Jail to be locked up for drunkenness, he had his cousin, Donnie Murray, yeah. standing with him. Don Murray said, what are you taking him for? He said, drunkenness. Don said, I'm drunk too, why don't you take me? And they said, no, we want one one bloke. Yeah. So they took Eddie. Oh. They took him and left Donnie behind. Oh. And the next next thing that well I told you about, please come and give me the yeah. information. Or, they they threatened threatened us on, on a number of occasions the police. But they are predators predator White people here. Yeah. 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 I don't know why, why they are the, the prejudice. It's, if you like to sit down and take notice of the white people, you'll get a job. If you like to sit down and listen to what they want to say, they'll do anything for you. Yeah. If you want to sit down and take notice of the payment they want to pay you, you'll get a job. If you want to stick up for your own rights, the white people, they, 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 they don't want you. Yeah. Not a black fellow anyway. relationship of Aboriginal people to the police in Australia is a complex one. The police being the functional arm of the old British Empire have been used not only in a civil sense but have played a military role in respect to our people. This is because of the still 
cherished legal fiction that Australia was not invaded but settled. In this instance, the police always concern about our safety and well-being. Book two of our cars as we make our way out of town to visit the alternative campsite known as the Piggery. Oh, well, you're all right. We still got transport then. <laughs> what, you've got to get a new tyre. I've got to get a new tyre. I've got to get four new tyres. You've got to get four new tyres. That's ridiculous. You've got to get your brake lights. I told you that he'd get you. Yeah. Yeah, we we, we saw him it. fly over the bridge after you. Yeah, well, you shouldn't yeah. have come then. You should have, have backed But this yeah. bloke was behind us, he would have gotten us anyway. That's what, you know, when, the they, when he went back up the street, he brought the other bloke down. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, they're just getting us to stop they, us. Yeah, you know, yeah. They, yeah. They, 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 they want to stop us from saying what, mm. what we know is right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, two big cop cars for I don't madam. Where's your license? Where's your car registration? Where's your registration? Yeah. Blink this and blink that. <laughs> did, did he actually let the windscreen wipers? No. Of course you had a windscreen wipers. Did you have to wear them? Well, he never did, but they don't work. Headlights. Windscreen wipers. Eye beam. Low beam. <laughs> Dim. Oh, no. Dim. No, I think they were too busy trying to figure out what sort of spell these right. words yeah. to put on their little tickets. <laughs> yeah. They spent so much time writing out the tickets. No, they didn't. No, no. Just, oh, just kind of went right through the boy. Oh, you passed the work. Mm. Wish you'd have daddy with us, eh? Wish you'd have daddy with us. That's the one time you know, I'm his daddy. I had him all the time. Kick him out of the car. Yeah, did you have him on Get out of here. I don't know what to do anyway. I wish I was a little dog and Fraser was a tree. <laughs> 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 Fraser was a tree. Oh, these copper was a tree. Fraser was a tree. The point I'd like to make, and it, it has implications which are further reaching than the, this tragic death of Edward Murray, is that uh, supposedly Edward was being held under what's called the Intoxicated Persons Act. And I'm not making any comment as to whether he was or was not intoxicated, but I'm saying he was held under that act. And the whole purpose of that act is to uh, protect people that the police who detain that person feel is in need of protection from himself because he's been intoxicated. Now, I'm not making any judgment or comment about Edward's case but only as a general principle. If someone is detained under that act, the reason for their being detained is, amongst other reasons, for their own protection. And uh, the question to emerge out of this case is uh, if he was being detained for his own protection, how was it possible for his protection to be so obviously neglected? This is the question that uh, a lot of people will be asking. And it has um, much further re reaching implications than we will because it's not only in this town that the police detain people as being intoxicated persons, it's all through the country areas of New South Wales. In the, in the city they have um, uh, non-police organisations who pick up people who are, have been drinking, but in the country it's still the police. And uh, this act was supposed to revolutionise the notion of uh, drunkenness being a criminal offence and it was supposed to take the area of drunkenness away from the police, but nothing has changed. And um, the, the, s some people would, say, would point to this case of Edward Murray and say, well, uh, a person is safer not being detained than he is by being detained. And, and, uh, so I say I can't pass uh, judgment on this case but it's the, it's the question mark that's raised and the question mark stays as to uh, if he was being held for his own protection why was his protection apparently uh, not looked after <laughs> In your news tonight, a stand for Aboriginal land rights at Weebor, Country Party Upper House candidates visit the North, and Northerners support the Salvation Army Red Shield Appeal. Good evening, John Begler reporting 98 Regional News. A number of buildings in Weebor have been defaced with signs promoting Aboriginal land rights. The signs were painted on the buildings using cans of spray paint during the weekend. 
The town's war memorial clock was one of the main targets. Signs including racism kills and cops and murderers were sprayed around the base. The local post office was also a target. The Aboriginal land rights flag was painted on the front of the building and slogans promoting land rights were placed on the walls. The cotton industry, which forms the greater part of the Wee War area's economy, was also attacked. One slogan read, What kills black babies? Napalm in Vietnam, cotton chemicals in Wee, Poor, in Wee War. It wasn't only public buildings that were spray painted, real estate agents' windows and news agents' premises and stock and station agents' office were all victim to the spray can. Narrabri Shire President Councillor Norm Sweetman said he was concerned about the signs, especially if they provoked incidents between the Aboriginal and white communities in the area. Meanwhile, land rights activists have set up camp on the Tulladunna Reserve near Wee War. The land rights flag is flying from tents and trees on the reserve. Aboriginal spokesman Marion Flick said the stand at Tulladunna is a stand for land rights in the area as well as the whole of New South Wales. Ms Flick said the people wanted their own land where they could hunt and fish like their ancestors. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, well, I say, even them, you know, I know, they can't be giving you coverage there. Hmm? Two dollars, where are you going to get? One dollar? Yes, you know, you get no other, you get no other coverage. When, when the incident, this is not the only, only site in New South Wales. Mm -hmm. Well, there, the one I put over there on the road there, you want to just put that right over there. And, and you've got to expect it. You do something like this, you make a stand, you've got to expect that. But, um, yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, our kids' future, we can see what, what, what you kids have got. You've got, you got your certificates, you can't, you can't even get a job. You know, so can you develop a, a piece of land like this? No, we're all lazy drunks. And that's the way the people say Anyway, it's the feel, huh? Yeah. yeah Thank you very much for calling down, anyhow. <laughs> we was able to get you a run down on it. What? What are they going to do to people? That's what they after. Karen, what are you talking about? That's what they after, you know? Yeah. You never ask one question? What name, ma? Silly boy. <laughs> See, that, uh -huh. they never ask one question about that, eh? Ah! So I said, what kind of protection we can ask for the police? None. A prominent We War citizen, Councillor Norm Sweetman himself, subject to attack in the slogans, today called on We War people not to be provoked by the desecration of the War Memorial. This is pu purely a police matter, said Councillor Sweetman. It is something that the police must deal with according to the law, he added. Today, a spokes spokesman for the Pimbarkla Aboriginal Corporation at Weewell, Mr Keith Morris, stressed that the spray painting appeared to be the work of a minority group and did not reflect, reflect the behaviour of the Weewell Aboriginal community. Mm -hmm. um, and what do you say to the Shire President's <laughs> argument that you're just a minority group and that you don't represent all the blacks in Wee War. What do you say to that? Well, look, we 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 represent all, all blacks from all over this area, not only Wee War. Uh, because um, they they can't make this stand with us because they're afraid of, of the intimidation that will come with it. And and that's the reason why they won't make this stand. The the um, the black leaders or so called leaders that do so much for their people are doing nothing. And, and they know it because they know the system, that, you, that they're under the government that, that won't bend. And they're making it a, a longest process. Um, they, they have our document in Parliament right now on land rights and they won't look at it. And these leaders know this. The, these are intelligent men that are in there and they know this. And this, uh, uh, this is the reason why they won't come and stand with us because they're afraid of intimidation. How would you all describe the relations between whites and blacks in Wee War at the moment? There is no relationship anywhere between Aboriginal people and European people. There, there is no relationship and this is one of the main things that crop up. Uh, they don't want trouble with the white people or the black people. The trouble's there all the time, the feeling's there all the time. It's tolerance that that, that keep the, the people together. And 
you know, they, they, uh, they say that people like us come and make the trouble. But the other people whinge all through the years and say nothing's being done about it. But, but they won't come and stand with us we, simply well, because we understand that they won't stand because they've got their families and they don't want to be intimidated. We got our families and our families came with us. I mean, you spent some time up there looking for, for their, their reaction, the people up there. The important thing is we've made the stand here. Mm. Yeah, well, that's why we're here. Yeah. That's why we can. And so, so you get the conflicting thing in, so it makes it look like two, black, two lots of blacks fighting one another. Mm. And, of course, we, we have that struggle because the government put them there for no, that. No, but wait a minute, you're, blaming, you're blaming us. You're no, I'm blaming, blaming all coverage. This is the best coverage we ever got. I'm blaming all, all, all media people. And we're used to getting this kind of thing. People come out and say, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But this was, was meant to kill us last night. What, was, what are these? These, these, these the were put in a track. Uh, you know, that was meant to kill us last night. And, and that's, that's another intimidation. We knew that, and we showed that to a detective and a policeman this morning. And, and we said, I said the words, what could I do? Could I say that? That was put here to kill us in those, in those tracks. Would you believe us? When did you Would find you say those? that we put it there? When did you find those? Last night about. Last them. night. Last we night we came down to check on this <coughs> and we just turned that corner and those were lying in the grooves of, of the tracks, right? That we could have driven In the grooves that the wheels that go, the wheels wheels go, go over. Yeah. Now I mean if we'd run over them and we driving along there we thought we could see I'm some sorry, activity but this down is here and it's real redneck stuff. If we'd run over them and blown our two front tyres, then we got pretty frightened that there were people here could have raced up there and built They were there. Out. You can you bet know? your boots they were there. I mean, that, that's really frightening, and we've got kids to consider. But I, I so don't... You didn't, so you didn't drive on that sort of area last night? No, anyway, so we so stopped, didn't... and we took what? them off the road, and we went back to town. Yeah, there was two boxes, was two boxes, two boxes step, set there, thinking that, that we were going to get out and go and have a look. And, and get our heads bashed in. <coughs> what? Huh? what else? Oh, Did you I want say you'd like to say? I want to read this. No, I'm sorry. <coughs> no, it's all right. We're but I mean, no, we've had a lot of people come and, and, and do us, mate. Yeah. Well, what and we get this. Yeah. I can understand you being up there because that's why John's shooting from down so we can see. Yeah, Put the slate on in front of the camera. Thanks, the bloody camera. Okay. Turn over. Rolling. Mark it. 21. Roll eight. Just a sec. Can Okay. Right. Now we'll just talk about um, the graffiti and the business about living, about where it was from and so on. But they are affronted by things being written over their town and over their war memorial. They, ri they rip our si sacred sites up. They're ripped up all, all over this area. There, there's, there's trees at <coughs> Collymungle, just out, out of Collarinabra. There was 82 carved trees there on a ceremonial site, similar to this. Uh, they, they're ripped up, put in the garden, the dogs piss on them. You know, and, and, and they're tearing up a sand hill just out of Walgut. That, that was where, where our people were buried, and they, they're still tearing that site up. And that, that's our ceremonial site too. I'm sorry it took so long, but there's an awful lot to cover, and uh, <coughs> that was fine. I don't know whether I'm happy with it. Oh, well, uh, all we've got to do now is try and find out what results or what coverage we get. That's the main thing, what they need is. See, what they're asking now is assurance that you're going to give them a good coverage. That's, that's what we're asking. In return of what they've been through with you for the last two days. <coughs> well, I mean, we're here to get to, to talk to everybody about what's mm -hmm. happening. And that's what we're doing. <laughs> I mean, they might see. There's a booby trap set the other night, could have killed us, it meant to kill us. But but I said to the sergeant yesterday and the detective, I said we couldn't go and report this to you because you would you would probably say that we said we put that there ourselves. And you know, so so we haven't got a leg to stand on really. But uh, the, why, the reason why the other blacks won't support us is because they're afraid of intimidation. Hello, Ron, you can't help us. Did you bring a food order happening. up with you? No, I didn't. Why not? We need your support. The <laughs> government supports us. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. Why don't you go and get us a food order, right? No, we don't have them anymore. We need blankets. Do you? Yeah. That one, give me the pizza. I knew you'd have community be at El Paso. <laughs> always the first ones on the scene. <laughs> We left all good on the doll. Yeah. 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 Listen, I'm not surprised at me getting a supporting mother's pension. Well, I'm eligible, I guess you are. I'm eligible? Look at my poor little This is our little welfare box, look. This is our little welfare box. Seven. Right. Ron Pike's come to give you a big food order. <laughs> Help you in your little demo. We're setting up our little little fun fun box. <laughs> Tell him. Well, you got to go. Ron, can I speak to you for a minute? I should. Better shout louder. <laughs> Get your arm fixed up before you come back. We got a good job. Good job. Good job. Good <laughs> you know, I think it's time that we we started making this kind of stand and and meaning it. We we just have to start to squat on land and refuse to be moved. You have to challenge the British law system, which says that the land belongs to the Crown. And it is a legal fiction, and they recognise that fact. And what you have to do is challenge it all the time. So with this bit of ground here, we want to be free people. We don't want to be goaded and dogged around like we was for bloody 300 years or more. We want to be free people. And uh, while they're doing this to us, they're not giving us any, uh, you know, to, uh, to make us feel comfortable. Like they're just sort of putting pressure on us all the time and not uh, well, we no giving us any any recognition whatsoever and uh, all they're doing is just trying to make it harder and harder and we've got a terrible hard life as it is and that's what i can see about it that's the only thing i can see about it and it's all see there's a lot of Aboriginal people who wanted to stay here they didn't want to shift from here but it's all white uh bloody uh, you know they, they say you go here when i tell you to go and do as i want to tell you to do all this sort of thing we've got no freedom here we had a bit of freedom, or we felt free anyway. But out there we got no freedom.
Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in September, and it's certain to be critical. Some of the delegates have expressed surprise that what they perceived as serious racial tension in Queensland and Western Australia has not led to violence. Well, tonight we examine just how serious that tension is as Aborigines across Australia have been celebrating National Aborigines Week. Our report is from Wee War, the little cotton town in the northwest of New South Wales, and Jenny Brock is reporting. There is no relationship anywhere between Aboriginal people and European people. There, there is no relationship, and this is one of the main things that crop up. Uh, they don't want trouble with the white people or the black people. The trouble's there all the time, the feeling's there all the time. They haven't exactly been celebrating National Aborigines Week in Wee War. For years, the so-called cotton capital of Australia has had its problems. Allegations of racism, exploitation of Aboriginal workers and poor facilities. We want this land. It doesn't really concern us that it's flood prone. People throughout this country have, have lived with the elements for a long time and they've just moved on to another place when floods or droughts did occur but this is still our place and we're demanding that we have the right to stay here, to camp here, to fish here, although it's not safe now because the chemical sprays have polluted the waterways and the fish have become, become contaminated. But we still demand the right to, to squat on a piece of land because our relationship with the land is much more important to us. We can march up and down the street with flags and um, we can march up and down the street forever and they'll just say, oh, there they go again. We're not harming them, we're not intruding on them in any way, we're just using their streets. We can have balls on National Aborigines Day and they'll say, isn't that nice, you know, these people are finally becoming civilised, we can get all dressed up and go and have a nice time. We can have football games on National Aborigines Weekend and people say, isn't that nice, but they are affronted by things being written over their town and over their war memorial. When the residents of Wee Wall rose last Sunday, they were greeted with this. The town's sacred site, the war memorial, the victim of a spray can. Other buildings also bore angry slogans, a situation which enraged many local citizens. You know, that's stirring up a pretty hot head when a heap of uh, problems when you go to that. Because there's people with relatives that did not come back from the war and they commemorate there annually at that clock at a service. And to paint slogans on it, why wouldn't the public be stirred up? But it's only this week. They rip, they rip our site, sacred sites up, they're ripped up all, all over this area. There, there's, there's trees at Collymungal, just out, out of Collymungal, there was 82 carved trees there on a ceremonial site, similar to this. Uh, they, they're ripped up put in the garden a dog's piss on it. Very much minority groups that's stirring it. Uh, you could uh, probably put them down to less than 15 or 20 people. They're, they're uh, reinforced by the stirrers that are coming from other areas, which it, it's worldwide, it's nationwide in this country. They go around stirring the people. And that's, and, and there's a few, uh, we'll say, foolish enough to get on the bandwagon here and help them. It's being argued in the town that by painting graffiti and slogans all over the town, and particularly on the War Memorial, it's just served to further isolate the black community from the white community. What do you say to that? I say that we couldn't be more isolated whether or not graffiti was written over town. I'm saying that although we don't claim responsibility for the graffiti, we certainly agree with what it says, and that the whites in town must be come to terms with the fact that they are living on stolen land, that this is Aboriginal land, and that racism and dispossession of land go hand in hand. For two decades, Wee War has been central to the Australian cotton industry, with Aborigines the traditional labour force. Cotton chipping is gruelling work, carried out in the heat of a bush summer. In 1973, complaints of poor campsites, wages and work conditions led to a strike by Wee War's seasonal <coughs> Aboriginal workforce. Since then, new machinery has meant fewer blacks are employed on the cotton fields. But last year, they were moved from the traditional Tulladunna Reserve to a new campsite further out of town. 
It was argued that the new site, known as the Pines, would have better facilities and not be as flood prone. But these blacks wanted the facilities at Tulladunna, and with increasing demands for land rights, said Aboriginal workers were sick of being moved around. <coughs> at the same time, the latest campaign of spray painting Wee War has left some of the town's blacks unimpressed. But the current problems in Wee War don't stop with graffiti. Four weeks ago, on Friday, June the 12th, this local Aborigine died. Eddie Murray had been drinking on this bank of the Namoi River with his cousin Donnie. Early that Friday afternoon, Eddie Murray and his cousin Donnie left their drinking spot to walk back to the centre of town. They were out the front of this hotel, the Imperial, when Eddie was picked up by the police and taken to the local station. And that was the last time his cousin saw him. At 21, Eddie Murray was well known in the local black community. He'd only recently returned from Sydney after a stint with the Redfern All Blacks football team. Police say they found him hanged in his cell less than an hour after he'd been picked up for drunkenness outside the Imperial Hotel. I was we was joking around, you know, spying around, just joking. Just when I seen the cops come down and took Eddie. What did they say when they came to take Eddie? Oh, well, I just come down and just picked him up and said, watch you, Eddie, and that's it. And what did you say when that happened? Oh, well, I, well, I seen him driving off and I was sitting out to him. Why don't you take me too? He just drove straight off. Why did you want them to take you as well? Oh, hold well, on. I was, I was in the same boat where he was in. And so you wanted to go with him? That's right. I just clapped to the cement, to the floor, at the police station here, and I couldn't believe it. What sort of spirits was your brother in? How did he feel when, when you left him? Did he seem normal? Did he seem happy? Happy. He was always happy he was. Happy go lucky bloke he was. He was a sportsman. Met on footy. No. He was an happy spirit he was. But I just couldn't believe it, that he did it to himself, you know. I just couldn't. Well, I want to hear it today. It was the end. Well, I reckon that uh, he couldn't have done it because he did so happy. He couldn't have done it, I reckon. Him. Eddie would be the only Aboriginal person in Australia, only one, that would have, had ever committed suicide. There's not too many Aboriginal people that had committed suicide. The grief of the Murray family has been underlined by the disappearance of Eddie's clothes. Police told Nationwide the clothes Eddie Murray died in were later accidentally thrown out at the local hospital. I asked a friend of mine Mr. Joe Flick and his sister Isabel to go to the police, uh, go to the local hospital and ask for my son's clothes, the one that he was wearing that day, and they said they couldn't locate them. The police declined to be interviewed about the death in the light of a pending inquest. However, the officer in charge at Wee War, Sergeant Mosley, who detained Eddie Murray, was prepared to speak generally about relations between police and local Aborigines. We, uh, the police, feel that the, uh, that the Aboriginal people and the police get on quite well together. That's not what I've been told by some of the other Aboriginal, local Aboriginal people. They say that relations between the police and them are not good. What do you say to that? Well, uh, everybody has their own opinion, I suppose, and uh, we, we feel that uh, we're doing our part. Uh, we're trying to uh, help them and if they have any problems they seem to come here and, and ask for assistance. There obviously are some disgruntled local Aborigines at the moment, some people who are fighting for land rights and so on and there's been um, the recent death of a young man in the area. Uh, would you say there are no problems in Wee War regarding Aboriginal white relations? Well, what I'm saying is that there's no problems in so far as Wee War in comparison with any other country town. Uh, we do not think that we have a problem in this community, in so far as the Aboriginal people are concerned.
Eddie Murray's family has requested a jury for the inquest, which is expected to be held in a few weeks. In the meantime, Arthur Murray is one of the blacks at Tulladunna protesting for land rights and a better deal from the white community. Well, I'm not that conversant with it, with Aboriginal land rights. You know, we hear a lot, we read a lot. Uh, some of it, it may be right. But um, I was wondering if they perhaps had a retrospective uh, of what would have happened if Australia wasn't settled in uh, 200 years ago almost. You know, the... Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean this way. If, if it wasn't settled by the British, it would have been taken over by the yellow races north of Australia, wouldn't it? Yeah. You'd have to agree there. And almost taken over by... Uh, uh, in the two wars, and what would have happened to the whole community, the Aboriginal and us and myself included? We wouldn't have been here today. It was the, it was the British flock that, that protected the land for them, and, and I, took some of it away from them too. Well, what do you mean by taking? Where did they take it away? Can you tell me where we've taken it away, or the uh, the uh, the Shire you mentioned have taken it away? Can you pinpoint these things? Inquiry into Eddie's death was held at Narrabri Court. The case was then moved to the Coroner's Court in Sydney, where an open finding on Eddie's death was handed down. The coroner said he could not rule out suicide, but neither could he rule out the possibility that Eddie had been hanged by a person or persons unknown. The coroner said he could place no credence in the evidence of one police officer who had denied at the inquest that he had been one of the arresting officers, claiming to have picked up his wife from hospital on June the 12th. Hospital records showed he did this on the 13th, and so he changed his evidence. Since last June, since this happened? Well, um, we didn't catch is that, had the things got worse in the town since this happened? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It was bad enough well, only before. six of us went up to court last, last Thursday. And we just kept calm, stand by, and let them do what they want to do. Anna was supposed to bash three police, is that? Anna, yeah, no, she's How old is Anna? Seventeen. The police picked her up. Fixed her up. Female. A female bears three police up. Be they were going to send it to an institution last year. So what you're saying, in essence, is there's been a campaign of harassment and persecution since this happened. Yeah. Which is increased. Yeah. Increased, yeah. Incredibly since the beginning of the inquest began, early November this year. Arthur, is it fair to, to say that because you finally stood up with the legal service and got legal assistance to have a proper inquest into your son's death, this harassment has occurred because of that? Of course, it's increased, increased, yeah. Yeah. It increased but there have been problems before that. Yeah, always. This is the first time you've stood up at an inquest with proper legal representation. This That's is right, right, yeah. In the whole of that area. First time I've known for an Aboriginal. That's right. Because of this you've been persecuted, you say? The reason that they've been persecuted is that they've taken the initiative to assert their rights as human beings to insist that a thorough and complete inquiry has been carried out into the death of their child and our brother. When we talk about our struggle in this particular case, it's a struggle for us to find out what happened to Eddie Murray on that day. It's also us insisting that we want the same right for all our children. We talk in terms of solidarity to the Aboriginal people at Tea Tree who were killed under the suspicious circumstances where the cops were involved and the cops got off. And if there is any victory in this, we see it as a victory that should be shared by all Aboriginal people throughout this country. We will is the focus point at this stage because of this inquest, but I would go so far as to say that uh, violence is carried out in most police stations that have anything to do with Aboriginal communities right throughout this state and country and we would insist that the Attorney General direct his police officers to show a bit more discretion particularly in detaining people under the Intoxicated Persons Act because there's always been the possibility that a tragedy like this could occur and it's happened.
I was talking to someone just to show up or something. To show what, mm. what can happen. The police should receive a ministerial setting out the extent to which they should use their discretion in detaining persons. It's not good enough that a person gets detained for being intoxicated, then ends up dead in a police cell. When we know from talking to our own people that they experience violence at the hands of police in such cells, right throughout the country. All documents in Eddie's case were ordered to be handed to top level police officers after the verdict. Eddie's family hoped that the Attorney General would order a full inquiry. This could be done if evidence is brought forward to demonstrate that some person or persons should be charged with offences related to a mysterious death. However, a police investigation is first necessary. history is something our people still have to overcome. Street marches, posters and videos. A thought for the bicentennial. Let our people be victims no longer, but be granted our rightful entitlement, land rights. <laughs> Someone get a well. Oh, we broke the fence. 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 Oh, could you tell us now why you've moved to Dubbo and what took place before you moved? Well, well <coughs> after the, the last one we had the after we lost Eddie. We had asked with white people and the police and we were and things got a bit plastic that we had to they want solution is, is move out of out of Weewool and find somewhere else to live because we couldn't live with the the feeling that surrounded us after we lost Eddie and, and, and in the way that we lost him. Oh, I was sick. Sick and up and my nerves and the going. Couldn't get to sleep at night. People was coming all the time, playing up on the lawn. And when we did move move from Weewool, they tossed everything, the police came down and the detective, they tossed everything around in the place before we moved to Dublin. So then we left there on the 28th of March last year, 83, 82. Mm. Well, Arthur said he was going to stay and when the detective came, they said one of the seats, everything was in the, in the house, they tossed everything all over the place. What were they searching for? I don't know. I told Sergeant uh, Page, I said, uh, in Constable Forbes, 
I said, I hope you get what you're looking for. I said, I hope you find my son's shoes and socks and his shirt and trousers. They just jumped up and they walked out through the door and I said to the detective, I hope you make sure before you come see people's place next time. I was packing up for three weeks. They just tossed everything out all over the place. The two barristers that was representing us was uh, Ken Holland and little Greg James in Sydney. Uh, they were pretty happy with what the coroner came to in the conclusion in the case, uh, an open verdict, which made us a lot happier in these findings that uh, an open case verdict meant a lot to us because we knew we knew that he, he, he wouldn't commit suicide in any form of way. He firmed now, Arthur, that it's, you'd like to uh, be able to have another inquiry into it, or would you rather feel that it should be left alone at this stage? Well, <coughs> this was a natural, this death was a natural cause. Uh, it will satisfy us. Nothing else but to leave it alone, but we come to the conclusion where the, this has been done to, to my son and a lot of other people, some where they think that whatever they can, can get and find out about uh, their children in cases like this. I'd like to uh, continue on as a open verdict, open finding at the Congress Court and, and bring show other people that we've got the rights to stand up and, 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 and trace it out with, with whoever they may be, whether the police officers or white, outside civilians or what they are, but we've got the right to do this and I'm only I came 500 miles, as I told my brother over there, uh, to appeal to the, to the white community to understand the situation that Aboriginal people are in today, whether it relates to the Aboriginal land rights legislation or not. Police harassment is intensifying, I've suffered with the Murray family to try and bring about proper legal representation when they suffered. And, and there's other people such as the Murrays and the pa Pats and Walker suffering the same kind of thing. The cover-up's there, it's done before blacks can take action. And, you know, I call on all Aboriginal people, builders, labourers, the brother, I thank him for letting out some of our frustration. I couldn't act the way he did. After all, I'm a matronly figure. <laughs> but I thank you for doing that. And uh, my niece, Karen, I, I didn't think I'd live to see you stand up with me. I've been in the game 30 years and uh, that's been a reward in itself. Um, a real reward to, to come to Sydney with I want you to have a good time now for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. I want you to get in trouble. We're a walking target now. <laughs> yeah, now I'm up, yeah. But we, what we want to do. Sit down on the 
it's good to spend some time with us too so we can go out and uh, do a bit of explore and see these things. I'd like to have all our gear up there walk in those places like that, where there was a big massacre on up there. That's where they had massacres there. They drove them over a bloody 500 foot drop and they were just used like pigs, kangaroos, and they were used for sport.